Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Suleiman EBPF Day. My name's Liz Rice. I work at Isovalent, which is really a pioneer in eBPF and the original creators of Cilium. And uh, I only have a few minutes today to talk about what is possible with eBPF today. We've already seen some great talks talking about using eBPF for networking and observability. And I'm sure we're going to see some more talks talking more about things like profiling and security. But I think we have tended to see eBPF as being restricted in what it can do. So I'm just going to take a few minutes today to talk about how actually we can use eBPF for any arbitrarily complex computing problem today. So, because I only have a few minutes, I'm not going to dive particularly deep into what Turing completeness means. But what I am going to show is that we can implement something called Conway's Game of Life in eBPF. And if you can implement Game of Life in a program, then it demonstrates that, that sorry, in a language, then it demonstrates that that language is what's called Turing complete which means that you can use it to implement any computable problem. So you might have come across Game of Life before. It's this idea that you have a grid. Each cell in the grid evolves over, a, over time. So there's essentially an infinite number of uh, stages of the game. And each stage, a cell either lives or dies according to the number of uh, other cells that it's surrounded by. So if a cell is too lonely, it can die of loneliness. It can also die of being overcrowded. But if you have just the right number of neighbors, then you can grow a new cell. So we see the pattern evolving over time. So, can we implement this in eBPF? I think this is probably the easiest live demo I've ever done, and hence I can do it with like holding a handheld mic. Uh, so it starts with a random grid, and as you can see, it's evolving over time. This is Game of Life, and it will probably run at least until the end of this talk, and probably all day if I let it. So yes, we can implement Game of Life in eBPF which may seem a little bit in conflict with the idea that we have the eBPF verifier, and there's a complexity limit. The verifier analyzes every eBPF program to make sure that it's safe to run, and it will only analyze up to a million instructions. And that kind of says, well, how can you implement any arbitrarily complex problem if you're limited to a million instructions? And the trick is, to break the problem down into multiple eBPF programs and to use maps to store state in between those different programs. And then it's just a question of how you schedule those programs to run. I'm aware of two ways that you can do that. One is to use BPF timers to, to call back when you want to schedule the next program. It's also possible to attach eBPF programs to perf events, which can be scheduled to trigger on a regular basis. All the computation in that demo that I've shown you is happening in the kernel. I will confess that the bit that writes stuff to screen is in user space, but the actual uh, kind of computing of the problem is all done using eBPF in the kernel. We'll just check that it's still running. Yes, it is. OK, good. So if we can implement pretty much any arbitrary problem in eBPF, doesn't necessarily mean that you should. I'm very much not saying that everything should be implemented in eBPF. But what I am saying is that if you find yourself with time on your hands, if you want to implement Doom or Quake or Tetris, then you could, and I would love to see that. So uh, yeah, not necessarily a great idea, but uh, it would be lovely to see. If you want to try that demo for yourself and see how Game of Life works, you'll find the code on the ISO Valent GitHub repo. 
Our team at iSurveillant is outside here today, and we're also at booth E2, all during KubeCon. So I really hope you'll come and chat to us about eBPF, Cilium, all your kind of networking and security needs. So with that, have a wonderful day at Cilium and eBPF Day. <laughs>